He said, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That is Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Jesus was talking to his disciples. He said, If any man will come after him, let him take up his cross and follow him. Undiluted Christians will take up their cross and follow Jesus. That is their desire. The desire of undiluted Christian is to take up his cross or his cross daily to follow Christ. Every day they are crucified with Christ. Undiluted Christian, they, they are daily Daily, they are crucified with Christ. They want to go through that pain with him. Regardless of what they are going through, undiluted Christians will not deny Jesus. That is how you know that this Christian is undiluted Christian. Diluted Christian, when the storm comes, they run away. When they is shaking, anything shakes their spiritual life, they give up. Undiluted Christian, that is why Jesus was telling them, say, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me. How many Christians today are taking the cross to follow Jesus? Undiluted Christian will carry Jesus' cross. He will not only take, we carry it. And say, Jesus, I will follow you. It's not about me, it's about you. It's not about me, it's about your kingdom. It's not about me, it's about what you have settled on the cross of Calvary more than 2,000 years ago. It's not about me, it's about the life, the new life you have given to me. It's not about me, it's about you, Lord. It's about your finished work on the cross of Calvary. A undiluted Christian. Is that Christian that does not mind what people say, but what God says about him or her? That is undiluted Christian. They carry their cross on daily basis to follow Christ. Are you such a Christian? Are you ready to carry your cross? Are you ready to carry that cross or take that cross and follow Jesus? Are you ready? Verse 25 says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Undiluted Christian, they don't mind what, what happened to them in this journey, this race in Christ Jesus. They don't mind. They are not careful of their own life. Yes. They are, not ready, they are ready to lose their life for Jesus' sake. Undiluted Christians, they believe that when they lose their life because of Jesus, they will gain eternity. They believe that it's not a bad thing. Undiluted Christian, if you are undiluted Christian, you will believe that it's not a bad you. Is a bad what he has done for you. For paying his price, the price. For the sacrifice that he has made for you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you, are on, if you want to become undiluted Christian, you must believe what the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth has done for you more than 2,000 years ago. You must appreciate that finished work on the cross of Calvary. If you want to become your own diluted Christian, you will constantly look onto the cross and be crucified with him on a daily basis. Every day, be crucified. Say, Lord, I'm crucified with you. I will go through with you because of what you have done, not what you are going to do. Because the God Almighty, the self-existent God has done everything for us. It's all about him. It's not of us. Hallelujah. None of us. 
In 26, it says, For what is a man profit? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? If you be the diluted Christian, what is your profit? What is your profit when you allow your spiritual life to be diluted, to be messed up with all these worlds that this world that is going on round and round that is not profitable to your spirit? When you begin to listen to them and your spiritual life is, is, is polluted and diluted, what would be your profit? What will be your profit if you shall gain this whole world and lose your own soul? What are you going to give in exchange of your soul? If you allow yourself to be polluted, if you allow the, undilute, the diluted world to come into your spirit and now you have are, you are become diluted Christian, instead of you to be undiluted Christian, now you have been diluted through the first doctrine that is not of the Lord. And that has profited you now. You, you, you feel you are living in your widest world. What will it profit you? If at the end you lose your own soul, what are you going to give in exchange of your soul? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Is interested in your soul. Your soul is important to God. Not what you gain in this world. It is not important to God. For you to gain the whole world. And lose your own soul. God is interested in your soul. Not what you have gained in this world. Because this world will pass away. The word of God remember saying. The word of God cannot change. One day every knee will bow before the king of kings to give account of his or herself. What will it profit you if you gain this whole world and lose your own soul? What will it profit you on that day when you shall stand before the throne of God to give account of yourself? What will it profit you if there is nothing to give account of? When you become ashamed, you cannot face Jesus. What will it profit you if you hear, depart from me, you walk out of iniquity? I know you know. What will it profit you? Have you ever sat down to think about that? So that you can be the undiluted Christian. That you say to yourself, I will not accept the diluted world. I don't want to be polluted by the diluted world. Whatever makes you happy that is not of God can cause you tears. Whatever makes anyone profit this world and your soul, your spiritual life is suffering. Can give you this word on that day. I know you know. The result is that depart from me. I know you know. I pray that you will come to the acknowledgement of Christ today. And say Lord. I want to serve you. As undiluted Christian. I want to be committed to you. I want to know you the more. I want to seek you the more. Father, help me. The Lord Jesus will help you. When you call upon him, when you call upon him, he's ready to help you through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Through the Holy Spirit, the Lord will help you because that is what he promised us. That the Holy Spirit will teach us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In this end time, that is what every Christian needs. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. The teaching of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Hallelujah. According to John chapter 14 verse 26 from the Amplified Bible. 
He said, but the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the straightener, the standby, 